Hey everybody, happy Thursday. Welcome to the Thursday Throwdown. I am so glad that uh, you decided to join me because today, and I have a feeling quite often moving forward in the weeks and even months to come, uh, today's topic is going to be one that I am going way deep into and talking about over and over and over from all kinds of different angles. And that topic is fear. Uh, I'm going to quick share this out to my group, like I always do. And then we're going to dive in. If I can actually find it on my phone. Thank you, technology. Okay. Awesome. So thank you for joining me. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So just recently inside of my group, I did a, a quick poll and I listed out about, I don't know, 10 maybe different fears. And I asked the people in my group to let me know which of those fears they really believed was holding them back from all the things that matter, from more joy, from more confidence, from more abundance, from more fulfillment, from more money, from more impact in the world. And the number of people who responded and the number of fears and the, the even additional fears that were listed in the comments really validated for me what I already knew in my heart to be true. Hi, Amy. Hi, Megan. And that is this, that I need to be speaking about the truth of fear all the time to everybody who I can get to listen. Because the truth is, we all, and by we all, I don't just mean the people in front of me here or the people on Facebook, you know, or the people in our community, everywhere. People are scared as hell right now for a lot of really valid reasons, for cultural reasons, for political reasons, for uh, community reasons, for generational reasons, and for personal experiential reasons, and even for religious and spiritual, spiritual reasons. But fear right now in today's society, it's fucking palpable, you all, listen to me. <laughs> We're all walking around with this immense amount of fear that is in our minds, that is determining our mindset, that's determining and driving on our, our emotional state, that's determining our vibration. And when you bring it all together, it's determining what we decide to do every day, how we decide to live, how we decide to show up, how we decide to run businesses or uh, show up in our careers. And I'm seeing too many people lose hope because they are so afraid. And there's one mistake in that. You're losing hope because you think that fear is your enemy. And I'm here to tell you and to teach you that fear is not your enemy. Fear is just a feeling. And when you learn the truth about it. And I'm going to share with you three things to stop doing like today, things will begin to change. And I want you to just quickly understand where I'm coming from with this. And if you're just joining for the Thursday throwdown, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome. I, I want you to understand where I'm coming from with this. This is not about my educational background, which is extensive, by the way, multiple degrees, certifications, thousands and thousands of hours of clinical practice. I mean, decades. That's not where this is coming from today. What I want you to understand is that I'm talking about this today with those things in mind, but from a very personal place. Because my entire childhood, my entire adolescence, and the majority of my young adulthood was spent in one state or another of fear, most of the time being absolutely petrified. Petrified of everything. I was petrified of my parents. 
I was petrified of what people thought of me. I was petrified of being rejected. I was petrified of being utterly unlovable. I was petrified of not being good enough at anything. I was petrified of having no value as a human being. I was petrified of surface things like my weight, like my perceived beauty or lack thereof, my perceived intelligence or lack thereof, my perceived talent or lack thereof. There was a time I can remember being, I don't know, about 20 years old when I was deeply in the throes uh, of anorexia and bulimia. I can remember being in the bathroom in my apartment and getting out of the shower. And the thought of wiping the fog off the mirror to look at myself was so intensely painful that I couldn't get myself to do it. That's how afraid I was. That this was just so utterly unacceptable and unlovable and unworthy. And of course, we know that for women, that's lots of women, that's a struggle, but the struggle is way deeper than that, right? It's about being completely disconnected from the truth of who we are, from the truth that our worth is a birthright and it's always intact. And that disconnection from that truth creates immense fear. And so I'm going to be talking a lot about the truth of fear in the weeks to come because one thing I have had about enough of is the marketing bullshit that goes on out in the world for products and services that tries to convince us that to create success in any area, whether it's business or life or health and wellness or relationships or spirituality or doesn't matter, that to do so, we need to be fearless. And it is bullshit and it is a deeply uh, destructive paradigm that people buy into, that we believe that fear makes us so weak and so vulnerable that we cannot possibly achieve the success we want in any of the areas. When you look at sort of life in a holistic way, in any of the areas that are meaningful to us. I'm writing about this in the book that I'm writing right now, which is called Build Your Brave, because I believe the antidote to this paradigm, the antidote to this destructive belief and all the actions that go along with it is to become resilient and brave. But that sounds like fluff and it sounds like nonsense if you don't understand the truth of fear. So a couple of things I want you to know about fear so that you can, from an informed place, begin to shift your thinking, your self-awareness, and your deeper understanding of fear that will allow you to make totally different decisions. So first things first, 99% of fears are learned. We're only born with a couple of them. The fear of loud noises and the fear basically of being dropped from high places. Everything else is learned, which means it can be unlearned. That's number one. And number two, the majority of the things you fear right now, being rejected, being humiliated, what your family and friends think of you when you put yourself out there, what the public thinks of you when you put yourself out there in whatever way you feel called to do. The fear of failing, of falling flat on your face, the fear of the flip side being insanely wildly beyond your imagination, successful the fear of what you would have to give up to be that, the fear of all the sacrifices, the fear of the person you have to become. There's so many, there are so many. They all, all of those fears 
The feeling is real. Even the possibility is real because you best believe if you are living in the ring, so to speak, like Brene Brown, you know, talks about when she refers to Teddy Roosevelt. If you're not in the ring getting your ass kicked every day, I don't want to hear from you. I don't. And you best believe you will get your ass handed to you. I can't even count the number of times I've had my ass handed to me. Right? So I'm not even sitting here telling you that the, the things you're afraid of won't happen or can't happen. I don't tell my children that. When my boys tell me the things that they are afraid of, even if they are wildly irrational and statistically improbable, I never tell them, oh no, honey, that, that'll never happen. Don't worry about that. Why? Because then I'm not helping them to build res being resilient and brave because guess what? The worst shit happens to wonderful people all the time. But if our energy our mental energy, our emotional energy, our physical energy, our psychic, spiritual energy is spent trying to be unafraid of the 8 billion unpredictable unpre things that could happen. We are wasting our time. We are wasting our focus and we are not being part of the evolution and expansion that we are being called to participate in as human beings right now. So the truth of fear is it is primarily ego constructed. And all I mean by that is this, the ego is interested in control, controlling everything, control how you think, how you feel, control outcomes, control other people, control perceptions. And control is one of the most dangerous illusions that exists that the majority of the population is bought into. Most people believe you can control things. You cannot. You know what you can control? One thing. You, whether or not you react or you respond to what is going on. Now, you can learn to discipline certain things. And in I have a six-month personal mastery program. And towards the beginning of it, we talk about disciplined conscious thinking. Because most of us are honestly lazy thinkers. We think the same exact shit we thought yesterday that we thought the day before and we've been thinking for years. It's lazy thinking. So yes, we can exercise discipline over thinking, over our decision making, over our the habits that we create. Okay? And yeah, that's a form of control. But that's not what the ego is interested in. The ego is interested in controlling all of you out there, every circumstance, every outcome. And the more you are engaged in trying to control, the more you're pouring gasoline on the fear fire. When instead, the way we thrive, the way we grow, the way we evolve, the way we expand is via command. You cannot be in control and be in command at the same time. Command is about presence. It's about centeredness. It's about self-awareness. And it's about making decisions to be and to act from that place. You cannot be in command of yourself if you are allowing your fears to dictate controlling behaviors. Notice I'm not saying don't feel your fear and don't be afraid. Are you kidding me? I'd be the biggest liar on the planet. I'm afraid all the time, all the time. Why? Because I am constantly, consciously choosing to evolve and expand, which means I'm busting out of my comfort zone on the regular. So I'm afraid all the time. I think where people get a little confused, actually, I don't think I know this. I know where people get a little confused is around being afraid and being able to be confident. You all, not you all, many of you operate as if those things are mutually exclusive. And one of my intentions is to be an example of the fact that that is not true. One of the questions I am asked most often is, how'd you get to be so confident? Have you just always been like this? Did you kind of come out of the womb like that? 
And it makes me laugh. I was just out to dinner last night with a friend I've been friends with for 35 years who has seen me at my worst. And we chatted about this and, and it was laughable because I mean, she's quite literally seen me depressed and suicidal and, you know, in just in full on self-hatred. So no, I've not always been confident. Am I exceptionally confident right now? Yes. Why? Not because I think I am the smartest, the most talented, the most attractive, the most special. None of those things have anything to do with my confidence. My confidence comes from having failed a million times and gotten up a million and one from refusing utterly to give in, from knowing the truth of who I am and also the truth of my fears. So I allow myself to feel my fear all the time, but my fear does not make my decisions. And there are three things that you can, and like I said, I'm gonna be talking about this a lot more in weeks to come in my book, in a webinar I have coming out soon. So please stay tuned. Because honestly, I think one of the greatest gifts you could give yourself this year is the ability to learn how to take your personal power back so that fear does not feed your ego, it does not feed control, it does not feed the decisions that you make, whether it's in business or in corporate or in politics or in the books you write or the speeches you create or the celebrity Hollywood roles you're going for or whatever or in just being a stay-at-home mom, in being a member of your um, community of faith, whatever it is, that you do it from a place of being, not a place of controlling. So there's three things I wanna share with you. I like to often show up and say, hey, here's three, six, 12 things you can do. Today, I wanna to tell you three things you can do knock that shit off right now. And you're gonna notice an improvement almost immediately. And the first one I said already, which is become aware of and do not be available for any part of a belief system that teaches you that you must be fearless in order to have what you want. Just release it, let it go. You are gonna be shocked as you look around, whether it's in the online space or walking through Walmart or whatever, how many brands use that word to try to trigger you? It's an emotional trigger to get you to buy a service, a solution or a product because you're scared. Instead of telling you it's okay that you're scared and we can be successful anyway. So start to raise your awareness about the level to which you have bought into this, that somehow you cannot be rich, you cannot be influential, you cannot win the political race, you cannot have the best seller, you cannot get the TED talk, you cannot raise successful children, whatever it is, unless you're fearless, and then choose to no longer be available for that. So that's number one. Number two, you've heard the phrase, face your fears. And I really hesitate in using that phrase. So instead of facing them, which I think most people translate into get over them, I want you to stop doing that immediately. I want you to just breathe, exhale, you don't have to get over them. The cool thing is, as you do the things that I teach you around courage and bravery and being resilient, some of your fears, you will just naturally transcend or naturally release, which is beautiful. And others, guess what? They're gonna be with you for life. And that is totally okay. It's totally okay. So the other thing I want you to stop doing is facing these fears with the intention of getting over them. Instead, what I invite you to do is from a place of self-awareness, just acknowledge them. Just say, I see this in myself. I feel this in myself. 
I see that that's there. And extend yourself a little love and compassion about it, for God's sake. We, especially as women, have to stop being our own worst enemies, our own worst critic. We got enough critics out there as it is. We don't need to be worse than all of them combined. So please just be the observer of them rather than the person who's like, I'm going to kick my fears ass. I'm going to face them and get over it. Please stop doing that and let that go and just observe and acknowledge what's, what's there, the truth of what's there. And then the third thing piggybacks on that. What typically happens when you take a look at yourself, when you take a good hard look at yourself, when you have, I use this phrase all the time, and my Christian friends say, I'm having a coming to Jesus moment. I love that so much, which for me is really just about a moment of pure honesty about what's going on with yourself. Most people in those moments will immediately, upon the moment of self awareness, shift right into judgment without even a thought about it, without even realizing you're doing it. You have, your ego has you so whipped and so well-trained that you go right from self-awareness into judgment. Your role as judger is feeding your fear. It's growing it. It's triggering habits, decisions, behaviors that are meant to control. And it is actually draining any confidence that you have. And so what do you do instead? You become the observer, the compassionate, curious observer. Isn't that interesting that I developed that fear? Isn't that interesting how much that's gotten in my way? I wonder what I could do instead. What would be possible for me if, that is like one of my all-time favorite coaching questions ever. What would be possible for me if I acknowledge that I have this people-pleasing tendency that makes me afraid to piss off other people or upset other people? What if I acknowledge that I have that, but I decided to speak my truth anyway or write my truth anyway or sing or dance or paint or teach or whatever, my truth anyway. What if, what would be possible if I acknowledge that I am a perfectionist and that perfectionism was taught to me by a long line of people and my ego's way bought into it. And so I don't like showing up on camera without makeup or I don't wanna do anything before I lose 20 pounds or I can't possibly sell this thing until I have 10 more certifications. What if, what would be possible for me if? I observed that, I saw it for what it was, and I decided to do the thing anyway. So what I'm asking, the third thing I'm asking you to stop, and you can't do it on a dime, so please don't misunderstand me. This is a practice is from a place of self-awareness of all the things you're afraid of, all the things that make you feel vulnerable, that instead of judging them immediately, that you just take a step back and observe them with compassion and curiosity. And most of my type A overachievers are gonna tell me, I don't wanna extend compassion to myself. If I extend compassion to myself, then it's I'm feeling sorry for myself and I'm gonna be lazy. That is a big, big bunch of bullshit. And that is all ego constructed because that's your ego telling you unless you hustle and you push yourself, you're going to do nothing. And you're not capable unless you bust your ass. How's that working for you? So yes, you might be making money that way, or you might be advancing yourself that way, but where else is it causing suffering? Is it causing disconnection in your marriage? Is it causing disconnection in your friendships? Is it causing disconnection from your physical, physical body and how you take care of it? Is it causing disconnection from you and whatever you believe is outside of you? 
So we've got to raise our awareness around the truth of fear. Fear is not your enemy. It's just a feeling that wants to be felt. But your ego is going to latch onto it for dear life. Because your ego knows if it can get you stuck in fear and working on your fear all the time, I work on my fear all the time, then guess what you won't be doing? You won't be putting yourself out there. And you won't be expanding and you won't be evolving and you won't be taking risks and you won't be failing, which by the way, you cannot succeed without failure. So if you have some idea in your mind that you're going to go where you want to go without falling on your face, then that's step zero before the three I gave you today. Stop resisting failure. It sucks, but it's also a gift. It's a gift. Every every failure I've had, and there have countless failures, there has been a beautifully packaged gift waiting for me at the end of it. Every single time. I'm not telling you it doesn't suck along the way. It hurts. It's embarrassing. It's financially painful. It's whatever. But there is nobody who gets to any level of measure, measurable success by hopscotching over failure. So I think I've given you plenty today <laughs> to think about, and I don't want to overwhelm you. But if you can walk away with these few takeaways, you're going to be in great shape. Number one, you're scared. It's okay for you to be scared. You are amongst like-minded people. But that fear is not your enemy. And it also cannot for any longer be the thing that stops you. But you don't have to get rid of it in order for it not to stop you. You need to build bravery and courage and resiliency. Yes, some of your fear will naturally dissipate from that. But what you will get that's even more important is massive courage and massive confidence. Because let me tell you, I've been knocked down so many times, there's nothing you're gonna do to me that's gonna knock me down that I'm not gonna get back up from, nothing. And when you walk around with that kind of confidence and courage, it gives you the freedom to be, do, say, whatever your truth is out in the world or inside your family or inside your church or at your PTA meeting or at your board meeting. And that's real freedom. So let go of the idea that you need to be fearless and any actions you are constantly working on to try to be fearless. Um, let go of trying to get over fears. In other words, I got to face them so I can get over them and just acknowledge them with compassion and stop judging them all the time and just observe them with awareness, with compassion, with curiosity. If you start those three practices now, you are going to be amazed at the lightness that comes with it. Stay tuned because in the coming weeks, I'm going to be talking about this from lots of different aspects, offering you ways to build your courage, to build your confidence, to build that resiliency and offering ways for you to go much deeper and build a skill set that will not only create more confidence and more courage, but it will directly impact all of the actions you're taking in the world. So it will impact things like how much money you're making. It will impact things like the opportunities that you're taking, how your visibility <clears throat> increases or doesn't, how you are making decisions and taking actions that result in personal and professional fulfillment. So it's not just about feeling better, although I want you to feel better all the time. It's about being more of the truth of who you are, which never ends in anything other than more abundance for you. So stay tuned for more of that. And I would love it. Oh, I'm loving to see all the comments. Hi, Amy. Sorry, you guys, they were coming in a bit slow, so I wasn't seeing them. Oh, Mashika, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I am so glad that you tuned in today and you heard what you needed to hear. Stay tuned. There's going to be a lot more of that. 
What I would love to hear from you all today, pop in the comments. What is the number one fear that you believe is stopping you from standing in the truth and embodying the truth of who you are, evolving and expanding and putting yourself out in the world, standing in that truth? That's what I want to hear from you in the comments, the number one fear. And I'll be speaking more to that as we go along. All right, everybody, as always, sending you off into the rest of your day and the rest of your week with much love. Go gently, my friends. Talk soon.